This is uh, about still 2017 at the moment. Uh, same should be possible in 2018. Um, I was asked the other week uh, about parapet posts in advanced steel and linking into cold roll macros, etc. How how could you sort of go about that? You know, can it can it be done? Uh, can you draw it? How does it work with the cold roll systems? So, effectively, what I've done here is I've um, started off from scratch, just sort of modelling in a, a, a steel column. I've I've sort of made sure that the uh, orientations are correct. So obviously the system line is on the outside here, and its internal rotation is correct. Um, I actually used a little uh, building block here. I call it or brick. I think they call it inside advanced steel. It's part of the uh, custom connection palette. So that's bolts on beam. Uh, this one here. And with selecting the column first, the main column, and then selecting the uh, attaching post um, I was able to set that up to give the parameters of sort of three bolts down in the vertical and the right horizontal distances and it's a macro so I can come in and access it later on um, I put the the rails in that you see on the side of the building are actually put in using the standard uh, advanced steel purling and rail macro which you'll find here um, to be honest it will it will probably only work up to the it basis upon the height of the column. I'll set the reference point down at the bottom and working from the bottom up. So the extra sort of that that's the last rail that's in the in in the main joint. Okay, so the uh, the top two rails that you see here, uh, these this one and this one. Actually, all I did was pick this one up and did a very basic uh, copy selection obviously up in the vertical distance uh, the distance I required and um, to be honest I just uh, changed the uh, orientation the position I just mirrored the top one so it was uh, inverted uh, this way I, I maintain the alignment uh, the vertical alignment because obviously there's an offset from the face of the main column um, so that positioning remains uh, so the the question was would it would it work with uh, an anti sag macro as well? So I said yeah, I think so. So you can see that the anti sag macro is in place and it's obviously going from the the very bottom rail right up to the very top one that's actually inside the uh, the parapet itself. Uh, this is possible with the uh, fairly generic uh, anti sag macro that came in a few years ago, side rail anti sag. And if you come into the set out here, you can see one element is rail to rail connections. So that's sort of the intermediate ones here. There's one actually for the bottom cleat as well. And there's one actually for the top cleat. Now, to be honest, that's ticked and says the same as the others because effectively the cleat is the same as the others. Obviously at the top, it doesn't really change. Uh, the only thing that changes is obviously sometimes you might you might counterform that depending on the capping detail that was going over the top. So if you sort of scroll down a bit in here, you can actually see something that says shims top rail. If you untick that to be the same as the bottom, and then you set it to a plate, you will actually get a plate, and you can put a thickness in here, or you can actually use a predefined uh, section. So if you want to actually use a flat section, it will actually default. To a packer plate that's already in the system with a hole diameter and edge distances etc so choice is yours which one you want to use there and very 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 similarly uh, here in the bolts if you come into the bolts tab which is right at the bottom of the uh, scroll bar here you can see that the um, the one for strut cleat top I changed to a countersunk fixing so with a countersunk fixing in place I then obviously get the counterformed hole and a flush fit on the top so it's possible to change that within the standard parameters and literally all I did was just uh, select the rails obviously in order even those that the even those those are outside of the main rail system uh, it works perfectly fine um, similarly on on the on the end um, I used um, uh, a trimmer cleat joint which put on a trimmer cleat and then I, I actually changed the uh, cleat to a non-standard cleat and used a bit of hot formed angle 
but again I enabled the uh, the packer plate as well in there so just by using countersunk in secondary um, obviously uh, there is a double option for that as well there is a, there's a different joint properties there it's basically the same joint I used the same option with the cleats I just uh, enabled the uh, counterform hole for the other joints um, I'm basically using a, a non-continuous uh, purling joint which puts the plate in to inside the web uh, you can play around with the parameters in here if you want to to change the size of the plate etc to fit around the column Um, and obviously I applied that to this one which is actually in the main it's in the in the parapet post even though it's in the main part of the macro and the the other ones here you could actually use uh, use standard joints if you want to so you could just use a single purling plate here so it's not affected by the fact that I've copied anything or done anything different I'm just applying a, a comply a standard joint on the end there and assembly here you can apply a double joint as well these are all standard joints that are available inside the system I just put them on a different palette for myself but you can add them onto your own favorites palette here if you so wish you'll find them uh, under these different uh, cold roll connections or uh, supplier connections here as well predominantly in this area here so the parapet post led me to something else as well in the fact that you you can create a parapet post and I thought well can I do something else with that so I copied out the elements and that and I thought well I'd like to make it as a custom connection so I've actually created a custom connection which I can then actually use go to the file select it and it'll follow a prompt that I've given here um, you can allow modification as well to this so if you want to go and change it so for example here I, I, I swapped out the um, the actual uh, bottom plate and actually made a little cap plate joint on it to give me the, the same extension value at the bottom there and just cap the uh, bottom of the parapet off obviously these this this is still a little macro which is better than just putting in plain bolts sometimes you can use this to help you out just puts in bolts and uh, plain holes but it is a good little tool So with that in place you can use uh, certain tools to copy with uh, you can copy within a group I, I use this one sometimes if I want to link everything together so I found one source object and then I just follow the prompt so I'm actually just going to select these couple of column heads here And with that in place, it will put the three uh, the column heads on there, and they're actually all linked together. Actually, if you were to go and change them, they would all change. Uh, similarly, depending on how you build a macro, a custom connection macro that is, you can actually use the same command, providing you get the beam orientations correct, which I have done in this case. I can actually use it on the uh, opposing side of the building. I'm just going to allow the modification again and uh, I'll just copy it along in a group again so that should apply it to that that side of the frame now 
obviously depending on a, uh, the building um things can change from one side to the other on on buildings especially uh with complex uh sort of structures uh even even a portal frame so with that i'm, I'm just gonna come back and uh, actually select you can actually select the joint box or any any part of this and uh come in and you can start so at the moment all this is this is, you can actually modify it because this is the master okay so i'm just going to get the uh custom connection dialog here Grab hold of that i'm into the custom connection now it says allow modification okay so i've got that checked in there and this uh this this cap plate is actually a joint And this is actually controlling, as I said, the uh, the actual projection below. So if I just uh, rotate that a little bit. So if I wanted to, I could change this measurement in here. And with that in place, obviously the uh, the custom connection allows me to uh, obviously change all of those at once. And then similarly, if you wanted to, you could come and adjust uh, the bolt grouping in here. So instead of having three, you might want uh, four, for example. And obviously there's another one in the bottom there, and then there's all the others that side. So there are a few rules to follow, but it will actually allow you to adjust that. So just coming back to the um, the actual anti-sag macro in here so this this works the same way as most of them do in the system it's just a uh, select the supporting columns now in this case you just select those two main ones obviously just pick the rails going up the uh, the side and that obviously includes the uh, the ones that go into the parapet here I don't have an eaves beam in this case so I went no to that so we can see that I'll bring something in and obviously we can see the normal bolts at the top here so you just come into the tab on the side here obviously we can see this ticked as being the same as the bottom so we probably don't need to do the cleat but what we do need to do is do the shims just uncheck the box and then it'll actually put a packer plate in there so if i just uh, rotate that up you can just see the packer plate has appeared so obviously the bolts are still wrong so i'm going to come into the bolts and i'm going to look for number two strut cleat top and i'm going to change the type to counter sunk I just popped out of the macro a minute there now obviously i've got a pair of sag, sag wires down the bottom um so i might i might actually decide uh, that i might want to put some in so again i'm going to pick an element of the of the macro i'm going to bring up the joint properties again sometimes it's easier to do that than it is actually to find the right joint box you can see there's quite a few in this model so you just come into the tie wires again and obviously pick the level you want them in so i'm actually going to put them up in level five um, which is obviously in the first bay in the roof and with that in place obviously the uh that's the anti-sag arrangement in place i would tend to use a singular copy uh, as this is quite an involved macro to apply things but you should be able to copy it along into the different bays if you just follow the uh, prompts that you can see on the screen they're normally at the command line so I'm just coming in here and I'm just selecting the rails again following the same process as before no to the eaves beam and with that the uh, the actual sag system is copied from one bay to the other
Um, there was some joints at the top of these as well. Um, I actually used uh, some standard uh, joints in the system. Uh, I'm actually using a double trimmer joint here with a non uh, with a normal hot rolled angle cleat. So I'm just actually just going to copy that into this uh, bay here. So this uh, again you can set the counterformed hole in the top. You can put the packer plate in and the cleat can be changed from a non-standard cleat to use a hot rolled angle in this case. I did that for both of them. And then by ticking the countersunk box it just used the normal standard counterformed hole and countersunk bolt. Similarly, I use a non-continuous purling cleat here. This is actually a non-continuous purling cleat joint. Which again, is obviously you can copy it and, and apply it as needed. Just need to be careful to follow the prompts. There are multiple copy options if you want to. I'm just going a little bit slower just so you can see what I'm doing. Again, this is a joint dialogue. So you can input entries and change as required. So I hope that gives you a little insight into possibly how to apply uh, a parapet post, create a custom connection for it, insert some joints to facilitate the rail connections, and also insert an anti-sag system using standard macros available within Advanced Steel. Thank you.